Hey there, once again, YouTube. Sorry if I sound a little strange today. I am sick. I'm coming down with a cold. I'm not liking it very much. Um, so first off, I do want to let you guys know. Let's go to Yellowstone, Steamboat Geyser Eruption, Steamboat Eruptions of 2019. Uh, give it a second. My computer's a little slow. All right. Now, we did see Steamboat Erupted, and I did upload a video uh, the night of the eruption, about, what, 12 hours or so afterwards of the live stream of this eruption because I was expecting it and I did catch it on the live stream on Swarm. So if you want to go see that, see the most recent video on my YouTube channel. Um, so it's the 35th eruption of 2019, which occurred at 3.40 UTC, September 12th, 2019, which would be 9.40 p.m. Mountain Time, September 11th, 2019. Now, uh, Steamboat Geyser, it, this one is a little bit weaker than the past eruptions. Probably because it was late, but there are also many minor eruptions prior to that. Remember the precursors I talked about? Well, I thought they only last for two to three days. Apparently, these precursors for this eruption lasted about four to five days. So, yeah, it lasted a long time. So, predicting or seeing when a steamboat eruption is about to happen with the precursors is helpful, yes. But it isn't accurate 100% of the time, as shown by the most recent eruption. Now, again... The most recent eruption is the 35th one of 2019, which is the 67th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. Excuse me. Do you think 2020 will beat the 2019 record? Who knows? The record is still being added to every time Steamboat erupts until 2019 is over. Let's go to recent earthquakes. Now, we did see a magnitude. Let's see here. A magnitude 3.0. Excuse me. Now, been downgraded to a magnitude 2.8. At supposedly 10 kilometers in depth along the Cascadia subduction zone west of Portland, right there. And we did see most recently a magnitude 3.3 in Montpelier, Idaho, at 5 kilometers in depth. Something happened last night in California, I will talk about in just a second. Okay, where to go? Okay, I want to talk about this real quick. Very strange. <clears throat> Come on, buddy. Take a second. We had some earthquakes in Russia. We had a magnitude 5.0. And it was on at 408 UTC on September 13th, 2019. And then there's an aftershock of a magnitude 4.7 about 20 minutes or so later. Just in the southern section of Russia in between Mongolia and Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Okay. Now let's see how many people felt this earthquake. Very strange place for an earthquake to occur. Uh, there probably are faults in this area. It, Russia does see some earthquakes usually, but just going to check out the closest seismic station. Four people reported feeling it. That's surprising since Russia doesn't really like the United States very much, and they probably don't wouldn't really report to the USGS if an earthquake happened. Arrival time of the closest seismic station would be Zalv in the IM network. Let's see if that station works because I've tried getting data from the IM network before, and the data hasn't worked out. So let's see if this works real quick. Nope, it says for some reason it did not work. Okay, that's confusing, so let's go back. Let's use Kirk in the II network, which was 82 seconds away. The arrival time took 82 seconds to arrive on this station, so we'll still get somewhat of a good look, but the frequencies will be lower on that station. So it took about 82 seconds to arrive on this station uh, from the epicenter to Kirk in the II network. Right here we do see the magnitude 5.0 in Russia between Mongolia and Kazakhstan. And we're going to add a 1 hertz high pass filter to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. Now you can see clear P and S wave arrivals right there. And going forward, not seeing too many aftershocks. There was this weird surface activity. Just very strange. I even looked at some of the activity. This looks like an earthquake down here, possibly from the same epicenter. This does not. So I don't know what's actually going on near this location. That does not look like an earthquake, but it's very strange. High frequency emergent event. And then it dies down, then there's a low-frequency event with a smaller mid-range frequency event at the end. And that's pretty much repeated over and over and over and over and over. So, And those are not earthquakes. That's something else. Maybe drilling, maybe mining. I have no clue. But again, here's the magnitude 5.0. Pretty strong in Russia. Multiple people reported feeling it. Probably a lot more people actually did feel it. Not seeing any real aftershocks except this magnitude 4.7. Again, clear P and S wave arrivals. And going forward. And pretty much that's it, guys. That's pretty much it. Except for this strange act. I mean, this station sees some very weird activity. And here's something that looks like an explosion. That definitely looks like a long-distant explosion 
possibly from near the epicenter of the earthquake. So these earthquakes might have been human caused. Very possible. Very, very possible. Don't know what they're doing up there in Russia. Maybe a nuclear test. Maybe testing some type of new weaponry. I don't know, because they do that sort of thing up there. Everyone does that sort of thing, but very strange events, especially this one with a PNS wave arrival close to about the same time as the other earthquakes. So I'm thinking this could have been coming from the same area, but I don't know. All right, now that's not what I wanted to talk about today, really. Let's go back to the earthquake map. Well, first off, last night along the San Andreas Fault Zone, let's go to terrain just real quick. On the San Andreas Fault, we did see an earthquake swarm breakout just to the east-southeast of Salinas, California. And the largest was a magnitude 3.0. Let's see how many events were reported for this earthquake swarm. Around 20. <clears throat> Around 20 earthquakes as part of this earthquake swarm. With the largest being a magnitude 3.0, 5.1 kilometers in depth. With many foreshocks prior, actually. Many, many foreshocks prior to the magnitude 3.0, which supposedly probably will be the uh, main shock. Actually, wait a second. I was wrong. The largest was a 3.8 at 6 kilometers in depth. Let's see how many people felt it. Here we have the magnitude 3.8 and 80 people reported feeling this earthquake along the San Andreas Fault Zone. Moderate earthquake. Not too big. Probably didn't, didn't shake things up too much. But that's not what I wanted to see, guys. The golden prize of this earthquake video. The golden, golden prize was something that happened last night at Long Valley Supervolcano, a large supervolcanic caldera complex in Eastern California. 219 earthquakes were reported for an earthquake swarm that broke out last night. 219 reported earthquakes. Well, 218 now. But yeah, almost 220 reported events, guys. Let's go over here and let's quit, take a quick look. We'll look at it in the Seismic Program Swarm in just a second. Okay, let's go to one of the closest stations. We all just use MCS. Look at this. It was a rapid fire swarm. Very energetic, guys. Lasting for hours. Kind of calmed down a little bit. And then we saw another burst again. Around 11 UTC to 13 UTC or so. And then it's pretty much been calm since then. A few aftershocks from the swarm. But very interesting rapid fire swarm. Haven't seen one like this for a long time at Long Valley Caldera. Don't know exactly around the time that it had one, once had one like this, like this strong, but this was a pretty strong one, guys. There were more than 220 events. Remember, 220 events is, I'm averaging, is the number of earthquakes that were reported by the computer system and possibly by other seismologists. This may be added to as time goes on as they analyze the earthquake swarm, but as you can see, and as you're about to see in swarm, the size of program swarm, there are a lot more than 220 earthquakes. I'm going to say maybe 500 earthquakes of all sizes, maybe even more. Just a crazy amount last night. And I will upload later today the uh, live stream from the Seismic Program Swarm of some of the stations at Long Valley called Dara. And I was able to capture part of the earthquake swarm. Not the whole earthquake swarm, sadly, but I was able to capture parts of it. So let's look at this earthquake swarm and the Seismic Program Swarm. Let's see, which station should we use, guys? What's the best station? I like to use an earthquake in the center of the swarm. See what the best should be to use. And I know it's not the closest station, because I had problems with the closest station not showing events very well. Let's do... Let's do MEM. I think that's a good choice. MEM in the NC network. And real quick, according to the earthquake spacings, notice this, it looks like basically like a blob right here. Let me turn on U.S. faults, which are the known faults in the United States system. Um, now, they did say, or excuse me, they did show earthquakes beginning right here, and then it shifted towards the east a little bit. And then the end of the swarm kind of took place right in this location right here, with some aftershocks spread around the area. So it kind of seemed to shift here and there. And by the way, yes, people live within this supervolcano, which supposedly has 250 cubic miles of magma right under the surface, guys. Here, let me show you real quick. 250 cubic miles long valley. Now, of course, it's not just sitting down there. Or 240, excuse me. Now, of course, it's not just sitting down there. Um, let's see. Let's go to news. I mean, it's it's in like a crystalline mush right now. I mean, magma chambers are not just open chambers. Okay. Well, for some reason, 
I don't want to go to express.co.uk. I do not like them very much. Do not like them. Yeah, it was this one and many other news org agencies. This is Forbes. Now, 240 cubic miles of magma was just discovered beneath California's supervolcano. This was uploaded on August 16, 2018. So, technically recent. Um, now, going back again, we do see the earthquake pattern right here. It is not occurring in a linear trend from north to south, from east to west. It is occurring basically in a blob, which in my opinion shows basic fluid migration um, trying to get up to the surface. I do not believe that this would have been a fluid migration pattern horizontally along a fault structure. Otherwise, it would have a more linear trend. It would look more like a line showing the earthquakes progressing along that fault or fracture zone structure from the fluid migration. I do think this was coming up towards the surface. Don't think it was magma itself. I was not able to detect any low-frequency volcanic or harmonic tremor, and the swarm died out within 24 hours. So, if it was magma... Magnitudes would be a little bit larger, maybe even a lot larger. Um, there would be severe uh, sulfur dioxide emissions, um, low-frequency harmonic volcanic tremor when it gets closer to the surface. So none of that was seen, which is a good sign. But this, again, has the potential of happening once again. Let's look at a space depth plot. There, I'll show you what that is. All right, here we have the Interactive 3D Earthquake Viewer from InteractiveEarth.com. I'll leave a link to his website in the description box below. Absolutely wonderful, too, to see the spacings and the depths of the events in a very cool way. Now, these are from the reported events, so almost 220 of them. Notice how they primarily occurred between about, I'm going to say, at about 6 to 4 kilometers, 4 to 6 kilometers in depth, in this location of Mammoth Lakes within the Long Valley Supervolcano Caldera. And notice how it didn't really, some of them might have gone up to the surface, but... It looks like something was trying to break free and couldn't. It was just stuck down there. Something was percolating in this area. Notice how it almost looks like a ring shape. Notice that? So something was definitely going on here during this time frame. Let's look at the animation real quick. Again, that's north. This is south. That's west. And that's east. Okay. So it was over a very wide swath. A very wide area. Notice that? So very interesting earthquake swarm in Long Valley called there. A rapid fire earthquake swarm right just to the east of Mammoth Lakes. And yes, people do live in this area. Here we have data from MEM in the NC network, network, excuse me, a short period vertical. Now notice all of these are earthquakes, guys. They're occurring in such rapid succession. It's just pretty crazy. I was able to record some of it on the live stream on Swarm. Now this station doesn't really detect any strengths above 2,000 amplitude count, but we can tell kind of how strong it was depending on how long it lasts up near this area. Um, that would be technically magnitude duration. But you can look at this, guys. Just look at how many earthquakes. Just right here, there are a lot of earthquakes. And over here we saw a few, but the main swarm started right down here. Look at that. With the largest being a magnitude 3.0, I believe. Let me go check for a second. I believe that's the magnitude 3.0 right there. Let's go and click largest magnitude first, right here. Yes, the largest was a magnitude 3.0 at 252 UTC. And that's not this one, apparently. So I'm not really seeing one for 306 UTC. Oh, yep, it's a magnitude 2.7 at 4.4 kilometers in depth. 3.0 was a little bit deeper at 5.6 kilometers in depth. People were reporting, look at this. Look at this, guys. People reported feeling all of these. Did you feel it? Except the 2.8. Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Basically, a lot of these earthquakes were reportedly felt. So people were being slightly shaken awake last night. They probably were a little concerned because I hope a lot of them who live in Mammoth Lakes know that they're sitting on top of a massive magma chamber, guys. Very large magma chamber. Let's see, 252 would be the largest event. So that'd be this one, I guess? I don't know. I, I don't know. I would... Ah, uh, very interesting, guys. This looks like multiple events occurring. Notice that? Multiple events occurring in rapid succession. And here we have more events. Look at all of these earthquakes. Look at just these. Just look at these real quick. Do you see that? In a, almost a drumbeat pattern. It was kind of like a drumbeat swarm. The rhythm wasn't there 100% of the time, but it was very similar to a drumbeat swarm. Now, these were not low-frequency earthquakes. All drumbeat swarms associated with magma rising and falling. 
have been low frequency earthquakes, especially at Mount St. Helens, Kilauea, etc. But these were very intriguing, guys. I believe it's some type of fluid migration, possibly magmatic fluid migration. Look at this, guys. Look at all. I can't, I mean, I'm going to try to make an analysis page for this, but I'm not going to be able to make plots for every single event. I mean, there are just so many events. I don't even think I'll be able to count them all. I really don't think I'll be able to count them all. I mean, there's got, there's got to be over a thousand here. I mean, it's constant. It almost it looks like the Ridgecrest area after the magnitude 6.4 and the 7.1. Except the magnitudes here are not as strong, but still. Jeez, guys, look at that. Just absolutely constant, 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 constant. And notice how there's no low frequency volcanic or harmonic tremor, which would show down here, and I do not have a frequency filter on to filter it out anyways. But still, something very interesting happened in Long Valley called there last night. And some of these are, look at, some of these are occurring so fast, you literally cannot tell them apart. So many events occurring so quickly. And then it sort of died down for a little bit. There are still some more events. Sort of died down. And then we did see right here these uh, regional signature from the magnitude 3.8 on the San Andreas Fault Zone. So yeah, last night was a very active night for California, guys. Very, very active night. This is very weird. Look at this. Huh. And then we did see a secondary burst at about 11 UTC or so. Now the rapid fire swarm broke out a continuation and look at the rhythm of this. Woo wee! Loving this stuff, guys. I love it. Very, very intriguing, definitely. So what do you think caused this very strong rapid fire? Not strong in the terms of magnitude, but strong in the terms of quantity. I mean, these are a lot of earthquakes. Something that not even Yellowstone has seen for probably since. I'm going to say he probably hasn't seen this since April 11th, 2018. During the April 11th, 2018 rapid fire swarm at West Thumb Lake Yellowstone. So not even Yellowstone has seen a swarm like this for a long time. The Long Valley is very, very intriguing, guys. My goodness. Woo! I love these types of swarms. I mean, look at that. Look at the energy just being released in such a short period of time. Look at all those. My goodness. And we did see some more earthquakes. In the past few hours, we really haven't seen much in terms of earthquake activity. Really not much at all. Maybe a few microquakes here and there, but really nothing interesting. This could happen again very soon, so just keep an eye out for it. Hope you guys have a great day. That's it for right now. Let's see if anything major happened while I was recording. Let's see. Because sometimes it does. Nah, nothing really. Nothing too crazy. Well, that's it for right now, guys. God bless, and I'll see you later.